So this is the area, one of the areas, because I've kind of been bouncing around depending on what needs my attention. But this is the area that I was working on during my last all-nighter. So over here, I'm going to be moving all those peppers that are my seed hut so Jay can keep working on it. I'm going to move those over here and set them up on little spikes with the drip. Um, I think up here, I'm going to be planting some corn. And then around each tree, I am planting a heat-loving vining plant. And then among here, I'm just going to plant different flowers, things like that. This guy is going to get moved over on this side somewhere. And then one of those is going to stay. That guy's going to get moved over a little bit. And this guy's going to stay. That guy's staying. And then two of those are moving. And I've got a ton of aloe for transplanting. So if anybody needs aloe, let me know. Because um, I'm going to be potting them up and also putting them in the yard. So I'll have extras and then I'll whatever with the rest of them. This aloe is aloe I pulled that I'm just going to go ahead and process. So if anybody needs processed aloe vera, also let me know. Um, but yeah, so I need to get all the grass. I need to have a day of cleanup where I just do all the grass, all the weeds I've pulled, everything I've done, and take it all to the back where the compost is. Anywho, um, so my goal today is just, I'm not going to worry about getting all of this grass out. I'm just going to do what I did in front, which is get most of it out, go ahead and cover it with soil, mulch, start planting in it, and then just weed it. Uh, the area out front that I did like a month or so ago, it gets very little grass. Just when I see it come up, I dig up the root and it's good. So this will be a fun little area to transform. That's the pathway, going to be the pathway to our pool. And over there, I'm thinking of doing some fruit trees, but also doing just a bunch of wildflowers and stuff to make it fun. And then eventually under all of this, including this, I'll still plant in it, but this is all going to be, this is going to be our grass area here. So all this will be grass, Bean's Playhouse is going to go right here, her little playset. Um, and then, yeah, this will be a nice big lawn. We'll keep the trees over here. They give great shade and we love them anyway. Part of why we bought this house was all the mature pine trees around it because it gives it like country feel, but we can see the sphere from our back porch. We can see the stratosphere. We can see the strip, like, and it's really a quick, like, 20, even with traffic, like, 30 to 45 minutes at the most. It's really not bad. So we usually Uber in anyway, so we just hang out and have fun on the drive-in. But anyway, yeah, a lot to do. I'm going to see how much progress I can make on here. I'm hoping that I can get the irrigation done here and move my peppers here today. Fingers crossed. So over here in the land that time forgot. It's it's horrible. I neglect this area so much. And yeah, lemongrass growing in like crazy. I'm going to be pulling this and transplanting it all over because we're using it for a lot of borders of our pathways. And then also it's great for deterring a lot of pests. So just planting it all over, it does great full sun or partial shade. I really need to trim up this grapefruit. Really need to trim up this rosemary here. And oh look! How fun, more desert broom I need to dig up. Oh, oh, that's good. I was just texting our arborist to let him know this one also needs to be injected again. They have to, with, with these, the roots are so crazy. You have to put, like it's a localized herbicide to kill it. So yeah, that'll, that'll be fun, excellent. So that's four. Ugh. Got a nice branch on this mesquite tree. So that's gonna need to get trimmed up, but I can do that one. Mesquite trees are frustrating. They are beautiful. They give off beautiful shade. But if you have children or if you have pets, I've shown this before, they have these massive spikes and they shed and they get lodged in your foot and in your shoes and everywhere else. But they're also really good nitrogen fixers in the soil. Oh, look, that one has little sprouts coming up. I gotta go chop those off. But yeah, they have so many benefits and especially in an area like the desert, they help make your soil fertile. So I love them on that. But once they reach a certain age, you can absolutely cut them down, put them in the soil as they decompose, I'll make it better and then plant something else. So trim up this guy. This is my fig that only has one round of fruit. Most of my figs in the back have like two or three rounds of fruit during the season. This one only goes once, but they're super sweet. They're really yummy and he's looking good, even with all the weeds and crap around him. Got another rogue palm, but that's probably, we're going to leave a lot of the palms in. They do have to come back out because that's a china berry and that's a china berry and they are incredibly toxic to dogs even though they are cute and put out great shade um, but it's one of the few things that dogs do actually go after their berries sometimes so that these still need to be stump ground but that's okay oh and look another desert broom popping in but that one i can pull out 
just finished harvesting our lemon tree like a month or two ago. I think there's actually still one or two yellow ones on there. We got a whole new crop coming in. So that is awesome. This tree never did anything. It had one blossom that fell off. I don't know yet if we're going to keep it or if maybe I'm going to put the lime tree there because I do have a lime tree to plant in the ground, but we'll see. If you know anything about me, you know everything's an audible and I'm scattered all over the place when I'm doing projects. So this here though, this area in our front corner is where I am planting, oh, hello bunny, planting um, what's gonna be the Halloween garden. So I have some bright orange corn. I've got, what else do I have? Um, I have, basically it's all orange and black. So I've got black flowers, orange corn. Um, I've got jack-o'-lanterns. I've got a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, I'm gonna put my two, two of my beds that I bought, I think they're eight by four by one. They're gonna go up here and that'll be fantastic. But as with most things here, it's the prep and getting an area ready that is the process, so which is fine. But baby steps, at least the irrigation out here works. Really need to come out here and harvest a lot of this mint and the mint flowers, which are also edible. And I need to harvest a lot of this mint so it can grow back in again because it's just out of control. I have not done anything to it, even though I should have, but shoulda coulda woulda these are awesome if you guys have ever seen um people talk about these snapdragons right so this is snapdragon granted this guy's dried up but they talk about the fact that the seeds why is that so blurry still focus anyway let's see there's got to be focus focus on him that the seeds look like the skulls of your enemies and they are so right, which makes these even more awesome because they're beautiful, they grow in the heat, but then they also look like death. So my pomegranates this year are insane. I think I had like nine last year. And this year, just this tree alone has like 12 or 13. Look at the size, they're getting so big and so beautiful. I do need to cover them because as they get a little bigger, the aphids and stuff will, will try making homes on them and I don't want that. So come out here with the bags that were on all the other fruit now that I've harvested that and these will get us need to trim this guy down I want to keep all the fruit trees I think probably around eight feet or less I have a fruit picker I can use but I really want to be able to get most of them by hand so I don't need to take out a ladder or anything else but yeah that guy I mean they're just all over and then I have the three trees in back two of which are totally totally full of pomegranates so much to do out here Got to change out these beds too. I got new beds to put here in place of the fabric ones. Finish this tunnel and then plant stuff on here. Oh well, I'm just gonna enjoy the stuff that is growing well and beautiful. Like the apples, one of which I harvested and ate yesterday. But these trees have apples as well. They don't just look like skulls. Like this totally reminds me of like either like the Headhunter's Belt in Beetlejuice or the Indiana Jones Temple of Doom ride at Disneyland, like the totems of heads. Or Predator's Belt with the heads hanging off the skulls. All of those work for me. So these guys back here you could see, the ones up front are much bigger, and also it depends on the variety, because I've got like four different variety in here. But the ones up front are much bigger, they still have a little ways to go, but the ones back here, as you can see, didn't get very big, but they have a lot of their layers. Like each one of these is a, gar a layer, right, of the garlic. So like when you get the paper and everything, this under there is paper. So not paper, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so on these, you usually wait until five or six of them have dried up. Then they're ready to harvest. So these guys, though, are super small. I'm not expecting much from them. And in the future, well, I'm not growing garlic in this bed again, so that's actually okay. But yeah, we're going to harvest a few of these and just see, see what we got, if anything. After I take these guys out, we will go ahead and probably put another pepper or two in here. Like I said, peppers like to be close. My plan is for this bed to be all peppers with a couple herbs and flowers for pest deterrent and for attracting the pollinators. And then when winter comes, we're going to go ahead and cover this with the greenhouse because I'm putting the cattle panel. Um, I'm poor, I may or may not put shade cloth on. I don't think it, it's needed it. It's had full sun this whole time and everything's looking great. Um, and then it gets shaded throughout certain parts of the day, like right now, which is the hottest, so that's good. But 
Um, yeah, I think my plan is to make this like all different kinds of peppers because I love peppers. It'll be close to the house that way. And I can cover it in the cold months with the greenhouse plastic and hopefully not only overwinter them, but maybe keep them producing. I'm super excited too because I have a Macedonian grilling pepper that I really wanted. I saw it on planted in the garden and they look so delicious and unique. And I've got my first one coming in on that guy. So, okay, let's check out this garlic and see what, if anything, we got. We're going to go around just in case somehow there was a, a bulb that actually popped up. We're going to loosen this. Okay, let's see. Is there any garlic? Oh, look, there's a little one. It didn't clove out, but I wouldn't expect it with as little as it is. This can still get used, though. I can still absolutely eat this. It'll just be like a single clove of garlic, but it still has the same taste mm, and it has the same smell. It's so, so yummy. So yeah, that's kind of what I expected. I think all of these, these four back here are going to be like that, but let's see. a little more over here as well because I don't want to separate it and rip it out. Yes, yeah, so the same on that guy. I have an ant on my booty, pardon me. Okay. Let's grab this guy. Oh, he's deep. I'm trying to get it too without disturbing. I might harvest that guy too. We'll see. Oh, see, so this guy got a little bigger. A little bit bigger. Let's see. And then this one. So these I did also plant much later. I like to plant them on the full moon in October, but this bed was just not ready and I had too many other things going on. So they got planted in December. This next year I will be on schedule though. And like I said, they're not going in this bed again. And that one's not too shabby. Again, they didn't clove out, but I did not expect them to because they were super small, did not have a lot of layers on them. I'm so tempted to take that guy, but let's see. He's got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and this one's, well, yeah, like five. We'll wait on him a little bit. Let's see if there are any other ones I want to take out. Got this gorgeous marigold and then this beautiful zinnia. Oh, I never liked growing flowers, and then suddenly I enjoy growing flowers with all of my food. I'll tell you guys this too. So this is in the back of the bed here, and you can see this guy is much thicker. He looks much better. You can see the braiding on him. Like, he looks great, right? And these guys are a little, they're better than the ones I just pulled. But these are also in the back. So it just goes to show there's no rhyme or reason. Sometimes things just don't grow the way you want them to. Sometimes they grow better than you expect. Like my shallots definitely did better than I expected for how late I planted them. And a lot of these, these garlic cloves when I planted them because I waited so long to put them in, a lot of them I didn't even think would grow anything because they were not in the best condition. And those don't grow, if they're not strong to start, they're not going to be strong while they're growing. So but I'm still happy with it and I've got so many big ones. The Transylvania did really well. I'm definitely gonna grow those again. But yeah, soon here it's gonna be time to harvest all this and set up, make sure my new bed's set up. I gotta set up new irrigate. I have so many things. My new Tabasco I just planted. Squirrel. Because this is all nice and moist and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and plant, like I said, do another pepper in there. And then I'm thinking I'm probably going to go ahead and feed these guys real quick because they're due. I like to feed them every two or three weeks because I grow a lot in a small space and most of these are pretty heavy feeders. Um, and yeah, even this close to fertilizing, it doesn't, it never has caused a problem with my garlic. It doesn't hurt them or anything else. Um, I can't obviously cut water because I interplant. And again, that's never been a problem either. It just, you need to make sure if you don't stop watering, um, with just about any crop, root crop and anything that grows under, it could be these, it could be, um, potatoes, any of the, you just got to make sure that you really cure them and let them dry before you store them. So these guys, I will absolutely, they're small enough to where it really won't matter because I'll probably use them in the next day or two, but I'm still going to hang them with the shallots, let them dry out some and start drying out. Cause who knows life gets crazy. 
one more time for the sugar rush peach because honestly I have never been I, I don't know if I've ever been so excited for a pepper and these are beautiful and I love the way the leaves look they get like this frilly look to them so they look like so beautiful and feminine but they're supposed to be hot and spicy which I guess is also kind of feminine so that's okay but yeah they'll turn a nice peachy color and they're supposed to have a sweetness with the heat but so many flowers on this so many peppers coming in another big reason to feed is because yeah growing so much so close and having two peppers with this many peppers on them they need the nutrition but yeah look at those I am so like everywhere I look and they're good size too like look at these oh my mouth is already salivating